John has brought me here today because you play an important part in, in uh, the treatment of uh, addiction in the county. Could you tell me a little more about that? Sure. Uh, I'll tell you a little about myself, which will make you understand. I, uh, when I went to college, uh, my dad passed away while I was in college, and uh, the uh, cause of his death was cirrhosis of the liver, and I had a difficult time believing that that's what happened. So I ended up in my last year of college taking an elective class on alcohol and drug rehab, filtration, introduction to it. Okay. And they showed a movie one night that showed all the medical problems he had, and it was the first time I realized that maybe he was an alcoholic. So uh, I went on, and when I graduated, I, I went into the uh, master's program in alcohol and drug rehab, and I obtained a master's in uh, alcohol and drug rehabilitation. Um, and in order to get the master's, I had to do an internship, and I did it in a treatment center that only treated policemen and corrections officers. So I actually lived in a treatment center for six weeks uh, and learned about it. So when I was elected sheriff, I'd really never been into jail before other than to drop a prisoner off because I was a police officer prior to that. And uh, I started looking at all the inmates we were doing were sitting around watching TV, playing games and things like that. So I approached their mental health staff in the jail. I said, why don't we put a group of inmates together in one of the pods and let them devote their time to doing constructive things like watching uh, videos related to, to rehab and, and to learn about the disease of, of alcohol and drug abuse. And uh, they told me it wouldn't work. So finally, uh, we put 20 inmates together and told them they had to try it. And uh, with the mental health staff and the inmates, uh, they really worked on developing the program. And what's unique about our program is we require people to volunteer to come be in it. Uh, nobody's forced to be in the program. So um, they told me I'd never get enough volunteers to run the program. And after the first month, we had a waiting list of over 60 people who wanted to get into the program. So we really sat down at that time and developed the first phase of the program, which is a six weeks uh, intensive educational program about alcohol and drug abuse. And uh, from there, once we started, we didn't have the AA or NA component in the program, and the inmates asked for the AA component. So we went to the community and brought someone in from the outside that started the AA uh, program. And there's a program called Back to Basics, it's written by Wally P. And uh, we, one of the members of the community, of the AA community, brought that program into the jail and started it. And it really teaches you how to work the steps, and the, uh, which was very successful. And what we learned is, since you got just a person on the outside that's involved in AA teaching it, that we could train the inmates to teach it. So we created two other phases of the program, a second phase, which is a little more deep learning and, and the substance abuse. And the third phase is more or less a successful living program where they remain together with the group of people that are doing it. They continue to learn. Um, they're involved in uh, working in the jail. But one of their other responsibilities is to come back to the first phase and teach what they learn. So we developed the program where the inmates are teaching the inmates. And the inmates really, from the beginning, bought an ownership into the program. And to this day, they go. Uh, do that. We're a little over 10 years old and we've had 8,000 people who have been in the program so far. Wow. Wow. Congratulations. That's uh, quite an achievement. Yeah. So what, what what title do they give you now? Is it the sheriff or the recovery sheriff? Uh, sure. <laughs> no, nah, the sheriff. Uh, joking that they call me the touchy-feely sheriff. But uh, really, uh, it's, you know, a lot of people trying to sell it to, not sell it, when I say sell it, trying to promote it to other agencies. They're, they're afraid to give that inmates that little authority yes. to help themselves and they think it will reduce discipline, but it's quite the opposite. It really increases the discipline of it. You know, we got, a, we got a, uh, 300 inmates that are involved in the program. And you can count the fights that they've had in the program on one hand over the 10-year periods, and those fights have been minor fights, just you know, yelling and pushing type things. Uh, We've had no vandalism in any parts of the jail. Uh, they keep the jail spotless. When they get up in the morning, they make their beds. Uh, and uh, I really believe if you walk in there and ask them all to stand on their head, they'd probably do it. Just because you know, it really has increased the discipline level of it. 
Uh, it's made it a very safe environment in those particular areas. And uh, I, I know we've helped a lot of people. Wow. Fantastic. Uh, this year we have a student from, uh, a doctoral student from VCU that's actually studying the program and the effects that we actually have two of them. One studying the effects of the program and another one that's in the educational part of VCU is studying the educational component of it. So uh, we should have a pretty good study come out by the end of next year. Thank you.